What's going on, guys? This is Fast Derek for the Moto Ohio Show. For Moto number four of the Moto Ohio Show, sorry we had some technical difficulties at the beginning of this episode, so I am just uh, doing a little bit of off-microphone introduction for you guys. Uh, my name is Derek Everett here in the Everett 328 Production Studios. We did have Kevin Ott. He is still standing right right there, um, and we do still have Jordan Beeling still floating around the house, but I did have some technical difficulties at the beginning of the airing of Moto number four of the show, so I'm just doing a little bit of off-microphone uh, introduction, and I want to thank you guys and we're going to segue directly into an interview with Cameron Farmer. We did miss off um, with this uh, recording with a couple of things about the Tri-State Arena Cross Series that I did touch back touch back on later in the show. So uh, just stay tuned, and thanks for joining us for Moto number 4 of the Moto Ohio Show. Right now, we are down here at the Salem Civic Center in Salem, Virginia. I am joined right here beside Cameron Farmer, son of the promoters Ronnie Farmer and Debbie Farmer. Uh, you've been with us for, you've been doing the Tri-State Arena Cross Series, what, this is a third year? Uh, third year, yeah. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for putting on this uh, this great series, and you, you, your mom, and your dad put the time and effort in, and this racetrack we have down here in Salem, Virginia, this is uh, your parents' hometown. Uh, yeah, it's actually where I was born, my mom and dad, they're both from uh, Salem, Roanoke area right here. I was actually born in a hospital, Lewis Gale, which is right across the street from our hotel. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it's really cool to come back, you know, to the hometown area and uh, put an event on like this in front of friend, a lot of friends, a lot of family. Um, bum won't be riding this one. I actually hurt myself last weekend at the Huntington Round. Came through the whoops, shoulder popped out in the whoops, and then actually I ended up somersaulting and catapulting. So I'm out this round, but it's the final round, so it's uh, – I think it'll be all right. I'm going to get some surgery done and hope for the best. Yeah, speaking of uh, you being born in that hospital across the street from our hotel, your sister is actually very, very pregnant right now, and hopefully she doesn't have to vi visit that same hotel yeah, or same hospital. hospital. Yeah, it's uh, it's looking like uh, she may be okay, but luckily uh, her doctor said there's a hospital close by. They're good. If you have one, you have it. Just go to the hospital. We got EMT paramedics sitting by, so they'll, we'll get her there. It ain't no problems. Um, this racetrack, you and, uh, and Donnie put the time and effort into this weekend. This is uh, this is Arena Cross at its finest. This uh, stadium style whoop section we've got this weekend is no joke. Like those are huge whoops. As soon as I was walking into, I'm like, Travis Sewell's gonna like this place. Yeah, I was talking to him during times, man. I was like, Hey, how'd you like to? How you like him liking them whoops? He was like, Dude, they're gnarly. So he even he's thinking they're gnarly, and he's killed every set we've had so far. I'm super jealous. Actually, I don't get to hit him. Um, I love whoops. I mean, even though I, I dislocated my shoulder, and I, I love whoops. They're just fun to hit. It's where a lot of passing goes. It's um, because my first race was indoors, so arena cross, I guess, is more my style. It was back in Huntington, it was your first race. Yeah, it was back in Huntington, 2002, I think is what it was, 2003, something like that. Because uh, I got 17 years in it now, and I'm 23. Um, so it's about 2003, yeah. Um, and that was cool. I was on a P dub, hit the wall, knocked out my two front teeth. Didn't even get to run the main or nothing like that. So it's a really crazy story, but 17 years later, still kicking it and building tracks now. So what the, what does this Tri-State Arena Cross Series mean to you and, and your parents? What does it mean putting on this type of an event for, for the amateurs around here? Uh, man, we uh, do it for the riders. Um, I mean, my mom and dad have their own business, so this is more of a hobby than it is an income. Um, definitely 100% more of a hobby than an income. But, uh, you know, we just we love motor, motocross so much. We love uh, motorsports. Um, you know, it's, it's in my blood. Um, we just we really enjoy it. We, see, we enjoy seeing the smiles on the kids' face when they show up. We enjoy building stuff that they like. I mean, I know that. I mean, we have a 50 rider hitting his 50 foot finish line. Like that is awesome that he's able that we can build something of that caliber that's safe enough for that 50 rider to hit. You know, yeah. um, I know a lot of our C and D riders have fun. So I mean, building something that everyone enjoys and seeing that smile, you know, getting that um, getting that feedback back is, is really awesome. Because, I mean, I've went and road tracks before. I did a Supercross Futures last year in Indi uh, Indianapolis. Hated that track. Could not believe that that was actually an amateur track. I mean, they just, they half-assed it. And and that's not what we want to do here at all. I mean, we, uh, we we really pour out our heart and soul. Mr. Donnie Adams with Motivated Motorsports. I mean, he is, he's a godsend to us. He's definitely helped us out. Um, I'm a little more of a greenhorn than he is, but he's definitely teaching me some tricks, teaching me the ways to go, which is, awesome that he's working with me like that um you know especially with some of his connections through club and whatnot and um 
So I got a lot of, um, I really appreciate Donnie, and I appreciate, you know, everybody. I mean, we're like a big family, and, you know, if something happened. I believe we had some boys out here cutting down stop signs to get us pry bars and put a track back on about 30, 45 minutes ago. So, you know, we're all, we all work together in this sport. Um, we get on a track, we bang bars. I mean, we'll butt heads, but we come off, we'll shake it out, hug it out, kiss it out if need be, and, um, you know, move right on, to the, right on to the next race, you know. But it's, uh, it's a big deal to us, man. It really is. I'm glad that you uh, you put this effort together, and I can't thank Chumpy enough for, for name-dropping me to your parents so I can come down here for these great events as well. Uh, what does 2020 have in store for Cameron? Because I know that you got your bum shoulder. You're going to have surgery on that. What do you have planned for the rest of the 2020 season then? Um, back to the Chumpy thing, Derek, we really appreciate you. You're the best in the business, hands down, man. You, the energy, the excitement, um, you never shut up. Um, but I love it. I mean, it's, it's never boring. It's never boring. Uh, but for my 2020 season, I am uh, trying to get surgery as soon as I can. Right now we're looking at, I think, February, what is today, February 7th. Um, I'm trying to get a hold of my doctor. Hopefully I can get a hold of him by next week, um, go in and get surgery. I'll be out for six months. Uh, but we're looking to come back. to. I'm going to try to do minios because if I can, six months from now is going to put me in September, um, October, November. So, you know, I should be back on a bike within four and a half. I'm um, going through some intense physical therapy is what I'm told. So the physical therapy will help me with the conditioning. Uh, the physical therapist I see, uh, um, Joe Lambiet at Riverside Physical Therapy, he, uh, when I was down there for other things, you know, he was really pushing me. He, I mean, he was, um, he really wanted to see me progress. So I'm going to go back down there and work with him. Um, so I, I really have high hopes and high expectations coming back in September. Um, and we're going we're gonna to move right down to Minios. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of racing. I'm going to get my bike ready. My front, my front rim is making a C-shape. Uh, my bars are bent down in my gas tank. I mean, that bike got trashed from that crash. But, um, you know, I'm going to put some money into it. I'm going to get it running right, get both of them going good. And um, I, I'm probably just going to come back at Minio's. Um, be at the I-64MX track in Grayson. That's our other track. Yeah. We, um, so I'll be down there making sure that one's prepped and nice. Since I'm not going to be on a bike, i got all the time in the world on a dozer as long as she don't want me to take her out to dates. But, uh, you know, Plan on having any GPs this year down there try or at uh, I-64? We do. We, uh, we're actually planning to have a handful of GPs down there. Huge, nice, fun GP course. Um, it goes into the motocross and our, um, I call it a fair track, but it's really not a fair track. We're trying to build an arena cross track. But I want a legit arena cross track, a legit motocross track, and then we have a lights track, which is because it's a fairground, so we do have a fair track that's a little smaller, more tamed down um, for the fair riders and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, we are going to have GPs up there. So we're trying to have, like, a full little scale thing, something around home, uh, right there in Grayson, Kentucky, off I-64. Uh, it is called I-64MX. But you can find Tri-State MX on Facebook, which has all the details to our arena cross events, our outdoor events, and we are working on a website for the indoor and outdoor portions of it. So be on the lookout for those. Right on, man. Uh, I know that the Tri-State Arena Cross Series is back in action for the 2021 season, so you guys have some plans. I'm pretty sure we're going down to Lexington twice next year. Don't know where else is on the schedule, but I'm sure you guys are ironing that out right now, and uh, that schedule will be uh, released before we even know it. So I can't wait for that. Um, who all do you want to thank for coming down and racing these Tri-State Arena Cross races? I know that your dad had you here for a reason. He wanted you to thank a ton of people. Um, you know, man, uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, the Lord Jesus for blessing us with, uh, with you know, great days to come out here and do this. Um, you know, our, our army for uh, giving us freedom uh, so that we're able to come do the things that we want to do. Mr. Donnie Adams with Motivated Motorsports. Uh, Wayne Walker, Catman. I mean, we couldn't do it without their support and help as well. Um, we got Motorsport of Roanoke backing us, got us some new looking beautiful hay bales. Tracks lined really great with. Um, the whole Tri-State crew, man, Scott, uh, Scott Brumfield, Chumpy Brumfield, uh, Chris Maynard, Megan Maynard, um, Kurt, he's checking wristbands for people. We got a couple of the ladies over at signups. I mean, it's, a, it's not one person. It's not three, four, five people. I mean, it is a crew of people that it takes to get this done, and a lot of people don't understand that. I mean, one person can't come in here and be like, I want to put on a race. I mean, you have to find the right people for the right positions and get them to do it. And, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. It definitely is, and there have been people that have raced this Tri-State Arena Cross Series from the entire area. We've had people coming from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. I'm pretty sure I've had a couple of New Yorks, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Kentucky, West Virginia. Oh, the, the they just can't stop. It, the list goes on and on, man. I mean, we got Rob with Defiance. He comes out of New York. Um, you know, he comes down and supports us. I mean, we got Liquid Performance here this weekend uh, with a booth setting up. Um, you know, we got Collins Career Center, Fast Change, Amsoil of Roanoke. 
Um, we got SSR back in us, Gateway Cycles, East End Cycles. Um, I mean, there's a whole list of people that goes on that, that's helping us. And as we go, we're getting bigger. I mean, our uh, attendance at Huntington for the two weeks was 750 riders, which is mind-blowing. And it was awesome. It was action-packed, bar-banging. I mean, it got down to the nitty-gritty. And here we are at Salem. Not going to have the numbers for that until after the weekend's over, of course. Um, but, you know, it's uh, we, we keep growing. From our first event in Pikeville to our second event in Lexington, I think we increased about 50 riders. Huntington's just not even comparable because that was crazy. Uh, then we're here at Salem. So um, I'm seeing quite a few vehicles out there today. Tomorrow we're, there's always more on Saturdays. Um, so we're, uh, we're expecting a really good turnout for this one as well. Right on, Cam. I can't thank you enough for spending a couple of minutes with me. Looking forward to the 2020 season outdoors and looking forward to coming down here for 2021 Tri-State Arena Cross. Maybe we can get you down there at the I-64 track to do some of that great announcing for us. If I'm not announcing, I'll be down there twisting the grips, having some fun. So. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. Heck yeah. Thanks, Cam. Let's go. Uh, let's have some fun for round number seven and eight of the Tri-State Arena Cross Woo! Series. Uh, we did have some technical difficulties there um, while we were airing Karen, Cameron Farmer's uh, um, interview from round number seven and eight of the Tri-State Arena Cross Series, and I didn't have the record button hit on the uh, the software for the MP3 or the video recording software. We were live on Facebook, but we didn't have anything actually recording, so whenever the it was all said and done, I didn't have anything to post, so I had to... Take a second, and I want to take a second and uh, introduce everybody. This is, uh, I am Fast Eric here in the Everett 320 Production Studios for Moto Number 4 of the Moto Ohio Show, as we always have the one and only Grip It, Rip It, Kevin Ott joining us here. Hey, guys. And uh, we also have Jordan Beeling back here Sweet. as well. This is the first time that we've ever went Facebook Live, and I've just got so much stuff, so many buttons that I have to click. i got to hire somebody to sit in a producer seat to twist all the knobs and push all the buttons for the live and the, and the video recording and the audio recording and the interview videos. I just... It's a lot for me to try to take care of and then try to host the show with you guys too. So you're doing a great job, buddy. Um, yeah. I'm trying to make it happen. You're like, but, uh, you're like Edward Scissors hands over there for the computer <laughs> side. You, know, yeah. you got it going on. You got plugging in. You're clicking. You're turning <laughs> knobs. Um, I can't thank you guys. People. I can't thank the Facebook uh, live joiners or, li or watchers, listeners, whomever, whatever you're doing got, right now. I can't few. thank you guys for uh, taking the time to you know join join us with your evening or have us in there with your evening. Um, we were talking about rounds seven and eight of the Tri-State Arena Cross Series just a Salem. couple of yep. Salem yep. Uh, just a couple moments ago. Uh, it's the first time we ever went down there. Uh, we were talking to uh, Cameron Farmer down there uh, with his quick take of how his weekend went. Um, since it was the first time that we've been down there back to the farmer's hometown. And everything went great down there. Uh, we were talking about the 50cc classes ahead of time. Lincoln Snyder was super fast on the number 05 Cobra Sky, not the finish line jump. Easton Kirby, we were talking about him as well. Um, consistent, great results. We were talking about the Tincher boy, Jarrett Tincher, and uh, Triton Triplet. Great, consistent results in the 50cc shaft drive class. And um, I was just getting ready to segue in after that to the pro classes. And uh, we had one local rider from up around here um, in Pennsylvania area, Franklin, Pennsylvania, actually, uh, make the trip down to race six out of the eight Tri-State Arena Cross Series races. And he, nice. he raced the AB All-Stars class, uh, Kyle Vitovich, the number 615 World of Wheels, Washington Brewery Company, True MX sponsored Honda machine. Nice. When, yeah, that, that's a, that's that. a mouthful, man. He did good there. He went down so there. I don't need to bone that one up. He did good there. <laughs> he went down there and uh, twisted the grips for the the Tri State Arena Cross Series. We seen him down in Pikeville with uh, with pretty good results. Uh, you know, kicking things off his his winter Arena Cross Series. You know, getting some gate drops and he was doing great. Um, didn't get the exact results. I don't think he was hoping for, but he was looking good throughout the weekend. And he didn't race Lexington the following weekend because it was back-to-back -back racing weekends for r rounds one and two and three and four. No, yeah. um, but he did take a couple weekends off since we did have a couple weekends off, and he joined us the previous weekend in Huntington. Yep. And he was looking great down there. He led the whole AV class one time. Um. Yeah, he did. He he was looking super he good. He was a main event. Uh, uh, Drew Minton was right there with him. Andrew, uh, Andrew got second. And Dustin Byers was uh was great was third as well. place. But I do know for a one hundred percent fact that Kyle Vitovich swept the night, swept round seven and eight of the Tri State Arena Cross Series in the AB All Stars class. It was killer watching him. He was like I, I mentioned to you guys money. I mentioned to you guys um when you guys went down to Tri State with us, I mentioned to you you and Talon both that Kyle had the perfect opening lap on Saturday night. In that AB All Stars class, he rode the defensive inside lines. The wide, oh yeah, that the was wide. the same night. Remember, absolutely. Yeah. He, yeah, he rode right down the middle of the track, the wide bike where nobody could pass. And as soon as he had a couple of bike lengths set between him and the second place rider, he could hit all of his outside lines and just keep pulling away. And it was killer watching him then. And he did the exact same thing this past weekend for round seven and eight. 
and ended up sweeping both nights. He's turning it on, man. He's really uh, – you see the progression there from his first rounds, one and two probably. He's got this inside game figured out. He he does like riding inside. Um, It's, it's pretty simple. It's going to be fun to watch him at Summit. I believe you'll be up at Summit. Yeah. He I did say he, that he's he, going to be there. I don't think that he is going to be at Switchback, his home area race okay. um, in March. Um, Conflicting dates because – you know, stuff's going on. We're starting on. outside, Dave. Is he starting that's outside? He, yep. He's heading south and hitting qualifiers. So that's his plan. I did have a chance to talk to him um, after the races were over just right. to see what his plan was. And um, that's his goal is, you know, to head south after after Rini Cross is done and, you know, keep progressing. So he's right. he's got his gate drops for the winter time. He needs he to get is, some gate drops for the winter. It sounds the like he's moving in the right direction. He too. definitely is. He's got the right people behind him. He's got some support. And I've got some trips going south. I know that he wants to go south and, you know, I'm going down. There's no sense in going down by myself, and I know that you want to go too, Kevin. I'm going. So, yeah. So we it's may be a great time. I got a one-ton van. <laughs> I got a one-ton. Load van. her up. Let's, let's go. Let's load her up. Let's go to the races. Boy. We like to go. You gotta watch that fun. vlog. Man. I gotta watch you that watch vlog. that vlog, and I'm gonna tell you, and then you'll see what the Huntington trip was all about, man. It was loaded. It was awesome. It was loaded down. Uh, this past weekend, uh, just to wrap a couple of more things up with, with the pro classes, uh, Travis Sewell, we talk, or Cameron Farmer touched on it there. And whenever I was walking into the arena on uh, Friday morning, I was like, "These are Travis Sewell whoops." Travis Sewell definitely put the work in and got the and got the moto wins both nights, Friday and Saturday night. Swept swept the Tri State Arena he's Cross. Such series. a bigger guy, and he's just he just he rides so he rides good. at four fifty like it's a. 250. Oh, the 250. Well, that he just it's, <laughs> rides it like it's a little rag doll. Oh, it's just crazy. Just slings that thing everywhere. It's amazing. And he was he was like so methodical that on Friday night cuz he just sat in second place and just let he let Hunter Sales do all the work. Yeah. He let him do all the work for the first 13 laps. And then Hunter Sales left burp. the left the door open and burp, right up the inside Travis Sewell went, took the moto lead, took the moto win. Took, there you go. took the extra paycheck. So and 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 then the young rider said, "Ah, oh, Squire." You know, he yep. was just like, "Yep." The three sixty seven uh, KTM rider for coming from the Upper Peninsula of uh, Michigan was super fast. I think that he won the dash for cash cool. one, on one of the nights. So he's got some sprint speed in in his pocket. Yeah, he's got some consistency things that he needs to just you know fine tune just a couple of things well, just here and there. At that age, you know, and that's what he'll progress into that. I think this year he's really going to transform in in this East Coast Supercross stuff. And I do know that Travis Sewell and Hunter Sales have been doing a lot of training together. And since Travis Sewell is kind of the veteran of the sport, he's yeah, absolutely. he's got a lot of years of experience. Hunter Sales, you know, looks up to him, and now uh, Travis Sewell is actually saying that I got to watch out because. The, He's gonna be getting me soon. The yeah. the student is now becoming a yeah. teacher. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, and that's how it goes. You're not gonna be able to keep up with these younger guys, you know that that are just that they don't that switch isn't getting flipped as quick to care. You know, they just don't care. And we seen we. I seen, didn't care when I was younger. I, when I was a sixteen year old me, dude, it didn't matter. We seen Hunter Sales far in as I can. We seen Hunter Sales uh, not be afraid to shut the door. We seen him, you know, make the money. We'll nice. say we'll say we'll say he made the money by making Sweet. the passes that he made, and it was awesome watching him get some more experience. No Gibson, and no Gibson did not go down there this Gibson past weekend. Um, but we, I did have a chance to catch up with Sewell in sales, you know, off the track, off camera, off microphone, everything like that. And they did say that they are heading down to Tampa this weekend. I was gonna say I, I follow Travis on Instagram and stuff, and he's been converting the practice rig into the race rig, as he put it. And I mean, he's that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they're they're both heading down to Tampa this weekend. So I am looking for, uh, I'm gonna see Hunter Sales and Travis Sewell's name in the qualifier races for for the main event. Which is Travis gonna try too? Oh yeah, absolutely. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, it was James Justice. So they're both on the 250s there. Yeah. And then, okay, here and, they go. And James Justice then on Friday night, you know, rounded out your top three. Riding um, such a good bike. He man. was He's really riding a sound machine. His form is. To the T, guys. I mean, you can't get no better balls of your feet he over was, the over the number plate with your head motocross rider. He was hitting all of his marks on Friday. Have your kids watch this guy ride. That's what you want to aspire to. He is just he's he's he made leaps and bounds. Dude. He's absolutely. Flying. I remember whenever I seen him and Timmy Glassburn rolling out at uh, at Briarcliff in the back of a van with a couple of Cowie four fifties. I remember James Justice years ago back then, and I see more progression 
throughout the years of his two riding or three to, years to, to where it is today. Yeah, just these two or three times at Summit, these two or three seasons, or two or three years at Summit. You know, when, like, Steve Roman come, you know, and Pappy and them was there, you know, and he'd be mixed yeah, in with those guys. Yeah, right there. And then, yeah, now, I don't, you know I mean? I would love to see them all tangle up again now. I mean, you've you know, seen be, you've seen Justice ride for a while. Oh, yeah. And what's your opinion it's of amazing. his riding style? Because we is. both, we're both, we're both Justice I'm fans. fans. I'm, yeah, a I'm a fan. fan. I'm a fan. On yeah. and off the track. You watch that dude, he could have a bad moto and he'll come off the track and he's not one of those guys that is going to set a bad example. Like nope. Kev said, have your kids watch him on and off the yep. track. Super nice guy. I've talked to him multiple times, and he just... On top of that, he doesn't go racing without his mom. No. It, him and his mom are it, the pit crew. The dynamic duo. They go everywhere together. I like just saying hi to her just as much as oh, you do. She's I see always her, so happy. I mm-hmm. see her and I always wave to her. It's yeah. awesome. No, it's a great it's a great motocross of, like, you just family. see that's It's how all it about the family, it. man. That's what it's all about. Well, another pro that we can talk about with having the family thing is Levi Kilbarger. Oh, you absolutely. always see him with his dad. I mean, that's just... And that's his daughters. So cool, yeah. And his daughters. But, so, I mean, yeah. he's always at the track. His dad's always with him when he's there racing, just like um, James with his mom. Yep. You know. This past weekend, uh, Justin Rodbell uh, rounded out your... Or he actually finished in um, second place on Saturday. It was sales in third place on Saturday with Rodbell in second. And Rodbell came came down to Salem this past weekend with his dad too. So it yeah. was awesome oh, yeah. seeing seeing these guys spend some time with the family and, you know, doing what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, I did also have the chance to catch up with Donnie Adams, the track builder extraordinaire of the Tri-State Arena Cross Series to, you know, get his take on the whole Tri-State Arena Cross Series and what he's got going on on and off of the track for the 2020 season. Here in front of the Moto Ohio show banner with the one and only track builder extraordinaire Donnie Adams, Motivated MX. Uh, you definitely put the work in this weekend. This is a killer racetrack that you guys have built. Uh, super cross stadium style whoops, super cross bank turns, catapult finish. You did a hell of a job this weekend, Donnie. Uh, what do you have going on this year uh, down at Motivated? Uh, man, it's been a, it's been a long couple weeks here, Derek. Uh, uh, these these last couple weeks up here with everybody, man, has been a really good time. I look forward to it for it again next year. I hate that we're ending already, man, but it is what it is. Uh, I know. It seems like the year is already over, and I'm not going to see you guys until next year, and it kind of breaks my heart a little bit. It does me too, buddy. And back to uh, that, man, is motivated. We, uh, we're we open every day, open seven days a week, and uh, we got six tracks down there. We got a little bit of everything. Uh, I am working for club during the week too, guys and gals, so I'm out there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so I'm a little bit of everywhere. Uh, You'll see me here, there, and everywhere. But uh, I look forward to seeing everybody at Motivated. We've got a good schedule going on. If you like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Uh, plug that thing right there real quick. <laughs> and uh, long story short, man, uh, like I said, I, I dread I dread saying goodbye to everybody, man, because this is like this has been so cool. The stadium-style whoops. Oh, uh, Travis Sewell told me to make them big and beefy, so I made them big and beefy for them. Man, I think everybody's having a good time with it. Uh, I love the finish line. The finish line is super fun. It's actually a true catapult this weekend. I actually had enough dirt this weekend. Uh, they started bringing me dirt on Monday after I got done hauling it out of Huntington Sunday. Started hauling the dirt in here Monday. They had a big old pile, and I got down here and just kind of lined it out. Uh, great venue. A little narrower than normal, but you know what, man? We, we made one heck of an action-packed event down here. This is the first time we've ever been to the Salem Civic Center, and this is in a spectacular arena. The pits are very accommodating. We've got indoor pits that will fit 400 bikes back here in this pit area right behind us so it's not a small arena by any means just the the racing is pretty action-packed because like you said it's a little bit narrower but you wouldn't you wouldn't notice it by looking at this racetrack as you did the hell of a job um the supercross style whoops i mean i was talking about it when i got here yesterday i walked up to the entrance of those things and i said travis sewell is going to have a great time here today and come to find out you said this you said that you talked to him and he said the same exact thing um can't thank you enough donnie for putting the pieces together and you know being with the tri seat arena cross series uh how long have you been hooked up with ronnie and, and uh and cam man i've known cam and ronnie for a long time i used to race with them up at their spot right there at their little uh thing i forget what it was. i think it was cross creek or whatever right there and the, next to their home place dude i've known them for a long time they've been good people uh they had a couple of indoor races and i didn't know nothing that that they were really looking for anybody but i just kind of contacted Ronnie like dude if you ever need any help he's like, i'd love to have you help would you be interested lord yeah and back to you man you do an awesome job man you all uh, you, you you take over you take control it's a very professional thing you do derek I hope you get everything going your way this year in 2020, man. I hope everything goes your way, homie. 
Well, I've got some goals. I know you've got some goals with club and motivated. Everybody's got goals. We're just trying to achieve them. Um, who all do you want to thank, Donnie? I know that you're not on the bike, so you don't have, quote, sponsors, but there's a bunch of people in your corner helping you out and uh, and getting things done. Yeah, I want to thank, uh, first off, I want to thank Ronnie Farmer, Debbie Farmer, Cameron Farmer, for everybody letting me be a big part of this right here. Uh, they just kind of let me do what I want to. They just say, go build it, and I do it. So it's cool, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank my family, Zoe, Amanda, my mom, everybody, for just being always being a part of it. And, uh, the motocross family in general, man, this this is a uh, big deal to everybody. Uh, I love it. I love your all's Moto High. I listen to it every week, just so you know, man. I'm I'm a I'm a fanboy. I'm a fanboy. So uh, I appreciate you all, and uh, look forward to the next one. Yeah, we did see Zoe, your daughter, out there at one of the races earlier this year, spinning some laps. And motocross is a family-friendly sport. We love having families here at the racetrack. I got my wife and daughters into the, into the sport as well. We've got Hannah Gilpin and her stepdad hey, racing with us this weekend. So motocross is definitely family-friendly, and we can't thank you enough, Donnie, for coming out here. Can't thank you enough. Shake your hand. Motivated MX. Donnie Battams, track builder extraordinaire, joining us for the Moto Ohio Show. All right, coming back into the Everett 328 production studios for Moto Number Four, the Moto Ohio Show. Getting all my buttons clicked here inside the studio. There we go. Joining us back here in the studio, uh, I had to, you know, you know, I'm working out some kinks and ironing some things out, and uh, we got all four dogs joining us in the studio as well. You know, being good puppies, we got Baker, Hickory, Reba, and Bill all just uh, kind of chilling out. And um, it was great talking about the Tri State Arena Cross Series. You had a great experience a couple of weeks ago, Kevin. It was. It was. It was a really. It was a really sound. It was a really sound weekend. You know, everything went. Everything went without a hitch. You know, like it just racing went and came and gone. And there was a lot of good riders there that weekend as well. It's good getting some gate drops. That's it. Got to get you down there, Jordan. Yeah. Got to get you down there. I think if Summit would have been a little bit different this year, I think things would have been different for Huntington for me, but, you know. Well, I do yeah. know that Ronnie does have some pretty good plans for the 2021 season. He is uh, possibly, probably, most likely guaranteed that he's going to be having a couple of races in 2020 for the overall 2020-2021 Tri-State Arena Cross Series. So it's going to be throughout the entire winter. It's not going to just be January, February, March throughout then it's going to start probably maybe wink wink back in the uh turkey day turkey day okay. month maybe nice. maybe have a maybe have a race in uh in santa claus month and then have a race in january a couple races in january race in february wrap things up in huntington that'd so be, that's, that'd his, be sweet. that's his plan he's trying to he's got a couple of venues locked down he's, we're going back to huntington we're going back to salem it was a great experience down there it nice. was a great drive down there it was an easy drive down to hunting or down to salem so i i'm going to drag you guys down next time um we're going down to lexington Two times. Sweet. That track's gonna be sweet. But that's a big place, right? That's the one. That's, that's a huge pretty good, place. Pretty good yes. Um, so we're going back down there two times next next year, and Ronnie is hopefully getting a couple of more venues lined up. Uh, he does have his feelers out there with a couple of arenas. I'm not gonna mention any arenas because I don't want to step on any toes or get anybody's hopes up. So I I know what they are. You guys know what they are because we talk about them off the microphones. Yeah, boy. And if they're if they come around, it's gonna be. It's, it's going to be off the chain. It's going to really, be off that, the that'll chain. Light it right up. It's going to be know, awesome. Gonna be. It's going to be awesome for Ohio motocross and the local motocross scene entirely. So, oh yeah, we can't thank uh, can't thank Ronnie Farmer and the whole crew for Tri State Arena Cross for putting on a great organization and a great set of races for the 2020 season. Can't thank them enough once again. Um, we're segueing into some more great racing coming up. Um, actually, sure. this weekend we're going to bring this up on the other screen so everybody inside the studio can see what we're talking about right now there we go route 62 pit bike bash coming up this saturday night february 15th it's a night race they've got whew, what do they got one two three four five six seven eight nine pit bike classes nine pit bike classes so if you have you a pit bike trail bike class exactly. you got everything going on and women's class yeah that's awesome that is awesome so if you have a four-stroke air-cooled thumper and you want to spin some laps and get some gate drops this winter Boom, there you go. Go down and ride with Jimmy and the folks at uh, Route 62 MX for the Pit Bike Bash coming up this Saturday night. Switch over it's back. It's not to... too far. No, it's just down in Martinsburg, Ohio. It's about, from here in Canton, it's about an hour and 45 minutes, give or take. So I'm, I'm planning on going down there and, you know, shaking some hands with some people and, you know, talking to some people and maybe do a little bit of vlogging going down there and yeah. and just have some fun with this. So I'm going, I'm looking forward to going Please down there. stop and eat again. We always do good when we vlog. <laughs> yeah, to the it's always a good time. <laughs> uh, you got to check you that out, Jordan. It's, it's I'm going to wash out. Um, yeah, sure. But definitely check out Route 62M 
MX on Facebook. Uh, once again, they are in Martinsburg, Ohio, and they are having a pit bike bash coming up this weekend. So definitely, definitely uh, check them out. And, $25 uh, per class, $30 for money class, $5 spectator fee. That's uh, that's pretty good pretty good numbers right there. So it's a yeah. good, pretty affordable if you want to go down there and race and have some fun. And not only that, on top of that, they are having, let's see if I can't bring this up here. Here we go, Route 62. Bring it up on the screen so everybody in viewing land can enjoy this. There we go, Route 62 MX Park Winter Series. Their indoor racing series is also having a race this weekend, and that is going to be on Sunday. And it's uh, Route 62's indoor racetrack. It's more of a smaller venue. It's great, oh, yeah. for, great for pit bikes and great for the super mini and smaller bikes. Um, if if you're an indoor racer like James Justice, he goes down there and, and just pounds laps out inside of Route 62. But he does it for a reason. It's not so much of an indoor track for for a big bike rider. Just riding your dirt bike, right? Yeah, it's a great place for the smaller bikes to go down there, race and enjoy and and have a great time. And he's got 50 cc classes, 65 cc classes, 85 cc classes. He's even got some mini quad classes. And I do know what's pretty cool about the uh, Round 62 um, MX indoor races is Jimmy has a Strider race for, yeah, the, for the little cool. kids. It is fun to watch those little guys go around. So that's that's always fun to to watch that. And same same price is five bucks to get in, twenty five bucks a class. So check it out on Facebook, Route 62 MX Park on Facebook to get more information for their upcoming indoor series. A couple more races left there. Yeah, yeah they I mean, got one got coming few, up. Got a few left there. One on Sunday. That'll be yeah. round number one, two, three, four, five, six of their series. I guess, and a, couple. I guess a couple left. Oh, I, I, I still see in March 22nd, but that's just a banquet. Is, is there it, a race that day or not? Um, probably I not. I think it's just their banquet. Just a banquet. Okay. Oh, just a banquet. So... I'm I'm looking forward to going down there and you know talking to some people and I'm looking forward to going on to Route 62 this year. I'm yeah. I got some dates booked up down down with Jimmy and uh, I'm looking forward to going down there and talking on the microphone and just having a good time. He's got. That's it. He's, I, I I'm I I've never been to the outdoor track, never rode there at all, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how how good the track something is. Something new. Well, no, that I heard kind of <laughs> falls apart and stuff. We need that kind of good good track in there to to kind of separate some guys and we're gonna pull a few different people from over that way. That we'll have to race in our, you know what I mean? So that'll be fun. So I do know that uh, Sean with Ohio MX Pit Bikes is going to be down there, and he's going to have a ton of things on display and, you know, helping out his riders. Uh, he is a, a dealer of uh, Pit Star, or yeah, Pit Stars, um, Pitster Pros. He He's a pretty good guy with the pit bikes, and he's he's the reason alone that pit bikes came back to Northeast Ohio. So there it is. Check it out on Facebook, Ohio MX Pit Bike Riders, O M P R, on it. Facebook. So and they are a big group, guys. They are a huge group. About, yeah, they're always you, posting on there. You like, need something or want to try to figure out something about what got, you're doing to make the pit bike world cool. That's your guys right here. It's the ones you got to talk to. 5,300 members. So it's the, the biggest and the longest running pit bike organization on, on Facebook. So check them out and uh, get some more information. He's I mean, a, look at how many different bike brands are up there. You know what I mean? That's, that's amazing. That means we're doing something correct. And uh, he's a... He's a pretty good guy. I was talking to him earlier today. Looking forward to meeting him on Saturday when I go down there and uh, and, and watch some great pit bike racing action. Um, we got some great things going up for the 2020 season for for the Moto Ohio show. Uh, what else we got going on, guys? We've got 62 coming up this weekend. Um, we've got Summit coming Summit's up. Summit's next week. The Summit. whole weekend. There we go. Uh, we've got Jordan. That's kind of why we brought you in here on top of some other things because you mentioned some things off, off the microphone that... Uh, you know, brought to, need to be brought to my attention that we had you come in here to talk about. But since you're here, you're kind of you're kind of Bobby's guy. You're kind of Bobby's rider. That and you're kind of his uh, go-to test rider. Yep. And you've got some insight that you've uh, you've rode the track ahead of time before. Yes. And you have an idea. Again, we have knowledge that we're not allowed to share with people. Yeah. So we have an idea of what the next summit racetrack could potentially be like, but. Everything is always subject to change because you never know what kind of dirt gets dumped inside that arena. Yeah. You never know what's going to be, what, what the soil is going to be like when you're pushing around with a dozer. You never know what clump of dirt you got to work around, and you just never know. So the track plan could be thrown to shambles, and we could be pulling something out of somebody's keister and throwing it inside inside the horse arena at the Summit County Fairgrounds <laughs> and be racing on it next weekend. Yeah, I think I mean, they'll have it fair, pretty figured out. I, they, yeah. they do every year. They, they do a real good do. job. Yeah, every every time it goes off without a hitch. So I mean, Jeremy B some, does a killer some, job building a truck. Work out. Yeah. yeah, I've been up there times testing and you know mid test, I'll say something to Jeremy and I'm like, hey, Ooh. what do you think? 
you know, or he'll come up to me and be like, what do you think? And I'm like, well, you know, and he's like, just tell me how it is. Is it good? Is it not good? Is it going to work? Not going to work? What needs to change? And I'll tell him and, and he'll go spend an hour out there and change the track. I, you know, I just kind of sit around and hang out, talk to Bobby, talk to Nick, you know, or I'll ride other sections of the track and try, try different right. lines. I, they, they like me testing because I have the arena cross experience, you know, and they know me and me and Jeremy have built a bond that he knows I'll tell him, Hey, this isn't going to work. You know, this isn't safe. This isn't safe. Whatever. The, the kids aren't going to, you know, it's not, they have to build a track that's friendly for everybody. You can't build a track that's going to cater to the pros. Right. Yes. The pros do bring some people in, but think of all the other families that are coming to watch little they're Johnny. Not, they're not bringing in what the two PW 50 riders and two junior classes. Yeah, they're bringing, classes they're bringing that all their dad, family. Brother, home. sister, grandma, uncle, grandpa. Yeah. Aunt, and we, uncle, and we was at the East stand and, and dropped. You know, yeah. You know, I get so, it. So in a way they kind of do build something for the pros, but they build it for, <laughs> they build <laughs> it for feet, everybody, you know? And that's, I think that's kind of what they bring me, they bring me up there and they're like, Hey, you know, Jeremy be like, Hey, try this line. This is going to be the fast line. But, try doing this slow do you think a, a 65 can double this do you think an 85 can double this it's you awesome that he has you do that yeah. for and all different he, experienced riders he tells me all the time he's like hey don't just ride the fast line ride some different lines make up a line you know or come into this section screw up off the first one and then can you double this instead of just doubling in and doubling through Let's see if you can, can make you, something out of can it can you roll in and then double if you get screwed up you know or you have a little kid ride awesome so you know I asked him, I said, hey, can can we talk about the track design you have in mind? And he told me, no, because you never know exactly. what can change. I mean, That's what I was leading to. He could he could wake up tomorrow and be like, you know what? That track design is not what I want to do and change it completely. So Right. That's, that's what I was kind of leading to. You never know what plans will and will not work out. And with what type of soil also has a lot to deal with it. Yeah. Everything has a has a huge factor in what comes to be what kind of track you guys are racing on. So that's why we're not going to be talking about that. We're just talking about some great racing action that we're both looking, or all three of us looking forward to. Yeah. And you guys are racing there, planning yep. on it. I should uh, be there Thursday. I'm planning on being Thursday, there on Thursday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I plan on coming up there, you know, doing some vlogging on Friday, on Saturday, on uh, Thursday for the practice day. And I plan on being, I'm actually going to be there all day Friday and all day Saturday. So I'm stoked. I'm stoked to be up there. What kind of race fuel do we need? We need race gas. What's it? Yeah. What, what, what's the race gas? What is it? C4? What do you need for the 125? Uh, I just need some VP and I need to get myself a bottle of Super M. VP 110, VP bottle of Super M. Bottle of Super M. All right. It's all to hold this up on a Thursday ride. We talk about vlogging. You notice whenever I tell him that we're going to have better confidence, I just like lean into him anymore. You know what I mean? We got to get you back out yeah. there. I know. And make I know. the motorcycles great again. We got all these nice steeds in the stable. I know. And we're not cracking the throttle. They're, they're on collecting none of them. dust and they're not getting the grips twisted. I'm getting so excited with gripping this grip. <laughs> you know what I mean? But and it's okay. Yeah. That's all in, in dandy mode, but. And I'm, I'm a dirt bike rider. There. Derek, you gotta get back out there and ride a little bit, man. You, you'd have a good time. I've never, this I've never ridden at Summit, so. You know, hey, I, what I don't a first think he has ever. an excuse anymore. Before he said, you know, I don't, my bike's not ready. You know, my bike. I gotta work or something. You know, we're you know, all a little bit slow right now, and it can pop hey, off. I'm <laughs> sitting here watching the Facebook Live, and Ashton Krause just jumped in and said, "Ride my 125, Derek." I mean, I'll, I know I'll let him ride my bike. I'm sure you'll let him ride <laughs> you your bike. You go for a, a little trip. Okay. So, he, my helmet, I'm going on pump gas. My helmet is... I always got gas. <laughs> my helmet's always in the van. I'll tell you that. that so is, I'm always... I always have the capability of riding. I just... I, I mean, my van's always got two helmets, two so, sets of boots in there. Yeah, so pretty much... Right. And plenty of goggles, plenty of gloves. So, so if that doesn't get the old... I'll get some race there, gas. But, I'll get some race gas and I'll be up. I'll be up there. I'll, I'll, I, Thursday, I, guess. I think we can spend a couple of laps. Yeah, it's I guess I can do some ride. I can do some ride. Because I gotta ride. I gotta. I gotta go up anyway. So I got a one-ton van. Up. I can just throw the bike in the back and go wherever, park wherever, What's do whatever. Blah 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 blah. Hey, if so. it comes down to it, I mean, my van's going up. It's not that far from here. We can like store it in mine, away. and then you could just drive your little grocery getter up there. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely, bring bread. So yeah. <laughs> pick up milk on your way so, over. Right up. Today is uh, February 13th. Recording day is uh, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. And we are talking about Summit 
uh, MX for rounds. Uh, was that two and three or three and four? How does that? I how think do they we count talked that? about this last round time. Two. I think they just consider it one like one round. So you okay, have round one, round, round two. two. So this is round two of Summit Indoor MX coming round up. Round two in the final round. It's this yes, is, yeah. uh, the final round of the indoor season for the Ohio Motocross Association, and it's mm. coming up on February twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second. Looking up at the calendars, so that is a uh, practice day on Thursday, and race day Friday evening, and then race day all day Saturday. That's it. Okay. It's always fun. So make sure you guys uh, make sure you guys add that to your calendars. I'm pretty sure that we're gonna uh, get more gate drops. Online sign up is open now. Awesome. Pretty yeah, sure. pre, pre registration, pre -registration is open now, so get yourself in there and avoid that hectic line. That I've seen that sometimes. line in the past. Don't wait until I mean, the bad. end to pre register because then that's how we get screw ups. I know they complain about that. Like everybody to tries to do it last end. minute and it kind of freezes the system up a little bit. I get it. I think the end, they close it at Wednesday at like noon, I believe, is when okay. it ends. Yeah. So try and get signed up before that. Just yeah. make sure you're in and, and good to go. Pretty because they they put it up on the the Facebook the the summit thing. It was me, Scott, and Red. Yeah, I see. Yeah, the boys. I was, I was, I was pumped, man. I was like, yeah. Six Nicks racing. Well, and that, that's that's hilarious because I'm just like reading Red's mind. Like I know, go out there, wide open. I get it, Uncle Bob. I understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like all right, get out. Ride hard, get in the insides. Like I'll just be chirping in his ear lobe. Ah, he's such a good boy. Uh, also coming up pretty soon. We just uh, mentioned that, what was it, March 1st is a Route 62 indoor race. That's uh, their final indoor race. That is coming up end of this month, beginning of next month. And then also coming up in the near future on March the 7th is another Switchback MX race that I will be attending. And that's uh, Racetrack in Butler, Pennsylvania, six-lane indoor racing venue. Really good place. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really solid place for being so local. It's a great it's place local. to get some great drops in the wintertime. It's not even, it's the same as Route 62 from us, so pretty much. Check those guys it's out on uh, on Facebook and all their social media outlets. I'll be bringing those guys up on the next Moto Ohio show. I usually try to go about two weeks in advance, and that's a little bit further out of my reach. So, um, we'll talk about the uh, switchback race in more detail whenever, and we'll whenever it comes around. The, you guys have to bring up the uh, Ram Jam pit bike race again. Oh, yeah, that's March coming 28th. up March 28th. I do know about that. So, yes. Um, so, definitely, you know, keep some things in mind for some great racing action coming up before the outdoor season kicks off. Put it, cool. put it in pencil on your calendar. Yes. So, um, yeah, it was, again, March 28th, right? Yeah. Awesome. Anything else going on in the Facebook feed there, Jordan? No, Man. nobody else has commented yet, so... Okay, we are answering any questions anybody may have, so if anybody wants like to... some party comments, and then there's live video comments. I got everything going on over yeah. here. Yeah. This is the most interaction that we've had for the Moto Ohio show, probably to this point. I don't know how many viewers there are, you know, watching us, but... Uh, I'm, I, gonna, it I'm keeps flexing. 10 to 20. I can't thank there. everybody for taking some time out and, and some joining us, and uh, hopefully with my technical errors and uh, all that stuff, I will be able to get this video footage and the audio footage ironed out and posted correctly so it doesn't sound so foolish coming in in the middle of the interview with somebody um so <laughs> hopefully i can get that figured out uh back to the show um we've got some more stuff to talk about another reason why we brought jordan here in the studio uh he actually brought to my attention that we had we knew that we had to pro race this past weekend but what i did not know is some of the qualifying times leading into the heat races for the main event program and yeah. I'll, I'll bring this up on on the sh on the screen for you guys and um yes i got the proper one up right now so i'm bringing this up on the screen for you guys right now and if you can see this right here you've got dylan ferrandis his inner his split lap time his lap fastest lap time for qualifying was 49 or 48.991 seconds and austin fortner's was 49.228 seconds okay now keep those times in mind, high 48s, low 49s. Clicking over here to the 450 qualifying times, we've got Adam C. and Cerullo's fastest lap time in qualifying at a low 49. So your fastest qualifying time of the day was a 250 rider. That's crazy. On a Yamaha. On a blue bike, yeah. On a blue bike. That's, that's Dylan Ferrandez for you right there. That's prime, <laughs> man. He's, he's, he, said, he said I'm a heater, you know, because if you think, that these guys have the mindset to where, hey, on these qualifying times, we can go out there and just go balls out one lap. We don't got to do a lap after that. You know, you don't have to, to put in your mind that you have a certain amount of moto that you have to get through. You know, so you can just go full sprint that you never really do in a race. So that's they just crazy. lay down. When they come by at that checkered flag spot, mm -hmm. and then when they land that, that's when they know, and they just turn it on. And like I say, oh, dude, when you, you do one sprint lap, 
there is your guy. You know, it's like a straight rhythm almost, you know, because you know you don't have anything to do after you come back. Holy cow. One lap. Did you see this, Jordan? Qualifying time, two, three, four, five, and six were, well, hundreds. Two, two three, four, and five were split by wow. eight hundreds of a second. Yeah, the it's, only reason I got that was hundreds of a second. That's why we got transponders, guys. Yeah. That's you, you're telling me. Look at look at the qualifying time here between Jason Anderson and Ju and uh and Cooper Webb. Point zero zero five of a second is your split between third and fourth qualifying time. <sighs> Five thousands. That's yeah. five thousand. The only reason I caught that was actually Forkner on the podium. That's like they come across the same time. Like one knobby was ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, Bruce like, like, was slid like the further little, down like the, the fork too. Like the little yeah. the, the little hairs off your knobby was ahead. You yeah. know, like Damn, man, that's, that's crazy. But yeah, I caught it because Forkner on the podium said, you know, it was kind of crazy that Dylan and I were the first and third overall qualifiers. And I was like, wait a second, what? And I looked it up and I was like, holy that's cow. That's insane. I mean, the tracks, you know, the track's going to be different because you have one group that went out there and then you you have group A, B, and C for the classes. Right. So the track's going to be a little bit different, but that's still very impressive that a 250 can run lap times of the top 450 guys. You got Reba joining me here. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't believe that whenever you said that. I'd had to do some research and, you know, continue to... The boss is watching us, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> they must be eating Chick-fil-A right now. <laughs> Joking. So, um... Hi, honey. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's, that's that is crazy. Good. And looking at the results from this past weekend up in um, San Diego, the 250 class results. Dylan Frandes, qu fastest qualifier... Taking the taking the main event win with 19 laps in that 15 minute plus one lap main event is how long those are 15 plus one and 20 plus one yep. is what the 250 and 450s are so you're getting getting 19 laps in he's you know pushing the envelope there and he was six seconds ahead of Austin Forkner so the qualifying went after running second place for a little while you didn't lead, yeah you didn't lead, he didn't the, whole lead the whole thing you lead the whole thing you come through yeah. past Forkner and then checked out <laughs> right him. right you're right I said that's that's that's, that's, that's that's really a precedent going into the six week break. Austin's got a lot on his mind. I can't wait weeks. for Tampa this weekend to see yeah. some of the East Coast riders. Well, see, yeah. that's 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 the thing, you know, because like he's got he's like, man, I got to try and knock that number one off of his bike, and that's that's not a very good start. Okay, just a quick 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 thought here. Out of these uh, out of these top 20 250 riders, who do you think is going to be coming 250 West Coast riders? Who do you think is going to come over and race the 450 on the East Coast? Hmm. I know Carnot will be over there. He'll do the. Yeah, yeah, I think Carnot he just rides his 250 though in the 450 class. Yeah, I he does. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Harden after probably be over there because hey. he's a bigger rider. Yep. As you bring up Logan, shout out 15th place, dude. Dude, gangster. I know. That's awesome. Yeah, right there. Clicking it off, Amherst, Ohio. Cha Ching, Vermilion. I mean. Vermilion. That's good awesome. job, buddy. Yeah. Really um, doing a great job out there, man. You're really holding it down. I'm a little disappointed with the troll train. A little bit disappointed with Alex Martin's uh. Uh, performance in 10th place there um not to say he's a bad rider it's just he's an outdoors guy he him and his brother both excel when when the conditions get terrible plus outdoors. i mean look what he's coming back from he was off was he not off for like a year that's jeremy martin oh that was jeremy martin and he's racing the east coast yeah is it, alex martin is just a consistent consistent guy that you know he puts the work in to get those results and that's not that's that's not it's a bad result. It's just not something that I think that he deserves. I think he deserves more around as a factory you based rider. Better you think a little bit he, better. He's yeah. right around there to me. He's right around the top five, top six guy. Not well, a top when you ten look guy. at that top five, top four, top six, top seven. Those are all really good riders. Yeah, Luke Clout's not not. I mean, you got no Jacob Hayes, Jacob Hayes, Cross Champ, champ. Mm -hmm. Cross champ. Carson Brown's just Luke a little Clout's stunner. An Australian Drake champ. just won Loretta's last year. Yeah, they're all doing really good. Incredible. I just was hoping for a little bit more out of the troll train um, coming into the 2020 I'm with season. You. I expected a little bit better. Just but... them starts, man. Them starts will get you when you guys got, you know, you're separating those from 5,000 seconds and stuff. You're going to just, with you the, guys are so close in time. You have no place to make up time. With the talent coming into the 250 class, where does that, you know, where does that put Alex Martin for 2021? Well, right. I mean, I, 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 on a 450. Yeah, that's what you got to think. Up? You got to think that he's got to move up because he's older than he's older than Jeremy. 
I mean, I, I mean, I guess you can ride the 250 for a while. Davos rode it his entire life, but <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't retire off a of 250. I really I thought he was going it. to. But he really does well on his 450, though. He's really he's really getting decent results on that bike. So yeah, who's gonna who's gonna transfer over and I ride see, a 450? I say 100 percent Brandon Hart ramped. I see him. We we see him on. Man, I don't a, know that. All these guys will lay back because they don't want to get themselves injured. Well, either. that's what I was saying with Brandon because he doesn't have anything to lose. He's sitting fourth in the points right now, though. He, is he? Pretty yeah, sure. he's doing really well. He's doing he's really well. Really good, I mean, Jacob Hayes. I see him coming over and doing it. I see Luke Clout for sure. For sure, I see Luke Clout because I see, I and hear them complaining, or I hear them com complaining, or him complaining about it on the TV airing about the 250. Like, he just doesn't like to ride it. He likes yeah. to ride a 450. So I see Luke Clout coming to Gover and racing yeah. the East Coast 450s. Yeah, I could see that. Plus, it'll help. It, there's nothing better than race pace. I mean, as for anybody else. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I think that's why Logan does it all year. I mean, look at mm -hmm. his results. They're showing he. He can right. be up because he goes to Canada oh, to cool. Quebec and stuff, and he just races yeah, up there the whole entire time. Supercross. All summer is just arena cross, supercross, and the north. Then, as for anybody else, I can't, I can't say any names there that I'd see for sure come over and race some East Coast 450s in yeah. the in the 250 class. Maybe Martin, because he's hasn't he jumped on a 450 and raced it? Mm -hmm. I think he did. Martin yep. Costello or Alex? Alex. Alex Martin. I mean, he might. He but might. a lot of those guys that if they do come race the four guys, just ride a two fifty. Yeah, they won't get up on a big Some bike. Will. Some will. Like you said, won't. Cloud will jump on a four fifty, but yeah. I bet Harnaff won't. Harnaff might, but I bet he stays on his two fifty because he's been. Yeah. Yeah. Hartranf might jump on a three fifty. Might. Might. That'd be sweet. I mean, something, something different. A stepping stone for him, not quite yeah. all four fifty, because we did see him have some pretty killer results out there whenever the turns didn't matter at the straight rhythm. Hartranf Hart Ramp got second place at uh, in the in the two fifty two stroke class. Sweet. Yeah. Behind you know I think Ken Roxon. You know what I think would be awesome to watch? I want to see Carson Brown ride one of those BBR pit bikes he rides on a full-blown Supercross track and see what kind of lap time he can put down. Have you seen the videos of him riding pit bikes? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Think, I'm just sitting here thinking. I think, I'm thinking about him hitting all those Supercross triples on a yeah, BBR pit I mean, bike. He might just, not be able to hit the triples and stuff, but he can oh definitely double them. Boy. But I wonder if he just rolls the first. And then he probably just double Good. out of them and then just keep it moving, or he just double single. Or some you sections know. he might double He'd in. Triple and it. Like those things have yeah, the power, and those things he's fast enough on it that he can hold the momentum around the outsides that he would. I've be watched able to... the videos of him, like I think he was out of Paula and was launching huge jumps. I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me! Like, I want a pit bike. I want a pit bike. I think it'd be fun. I want a pit bike. <laughs> I want a, I want a new bike and I want a pit bike. Those two things that I really really want. Um, that's awesome for Dylan Frannis working his way through the pack and you know taking the top spot there in the 250 class. There's there's a reason why he's got that number one plate. You can say whatever you want to say about the incident a couple of weeks ago. We discussed it on the on the air for on a previous Moto Ohio show. So if you want to get our take on it, Kevin and I pretty much had the same same take on it. I think I was here for that one too. I think might have been. I think you might have been. Um, and you still have people. I mean, I see the forums and stuff and see comments on Vitals instagram everybody keeps complaining oh he can't make a pass unless he makes contact i mean let's be real here you're talking about the fastest guys in the world they're on their a game sometimes you might have to make i'm not saying you go and t-bone take no them, but you might have to make a little contact and knock him off a little bit to back him off his pace i and, think that you gotta show a wheel even if you don't make contact you have to show a yeah. wheel to the guy ahead of you to let them know that hey oh whoa that guy's here it's and a it's a mind game it's a mind game exactly so I I don't because there's not enough of these guys that are professional enough to just reel them in. I don't care if you're right there. Like, I really don't even care if you're right on my you know what I mean right on my rear fender, you know because I'm still gonna ride my lines. If you're not gonna duck in there like you said, then I'm never gonna worry about you. Yeah. If you want to follow me to the checkered flag? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to get that race win, you're gonna have to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. And, and he I don't fault him for and it. And he sounds funny when he talks about it. <laughs> uh. I mean. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 just, like, I just made you pass, and it was just uh, the me the memes are <laughs> pretty like, funny. The memes are, and funny. I love it. Yeah, that's all but great. I, I honestly okay don't don't mind Dylan Frannis. I don't. Any publicity is good publicity. Man. So he I'm loves it. I'm on Frannis's board. You know, I've watched some of his Instagram footage. Wow, he can make that 250F fly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like just the stuff that he can do. It's all it's all promo videos, so it's all it's all video editing and stuff like that. But it's cool looking. I'll tell it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever's putting this and, stuff together knows what they're doing. And yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do. They all want to win. You gotta do what you gotta do to win. 
I mean, like I said, I'm not saying go out there and T-bone them, but no. you have to make aggressive moves. And that's what everyone deep down inside knows that none of that's happening. This is the 250 That's why class. he's still in the race. FIM will kick you out, dude. No, he's on probation. They're not going to deal with it. They right. know what he has pr- to do, and the, they know he's been doing it clean. This is the 250 class. This It's almost expected that that is the type of racing that... Right. These that, aren't that veterans. Goes, this the, isn't a vet class. The 450 this class... This is an older group now, of seasoned riders. This yeah, Martin moved up. This is just... This is just yeah, this is just... <laughs> All the experience is gone. Just young kids, some of them teenagers. Now, you know what I mean? So that, that's where it's at. Rewinding a couple of years ago, we all remember the Marvin Muskan eli Tomac incident where, you know, Tomac made the pass, Marvin Muskan came back in and took them both out. Everybody remembers that pass. Uh, that, I remember Zach smoking Savachi for the title. I was there. I, mean, I witnessed it firsthand. That was really? awesome. Oh, that was awesome. That would have been awesome. That would been awesome. I, care. Been, That's, so I mean, ain't nobody was upset about that or this or that. You know, so it's just, it is tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Don't I, give me that shit. No, no way. There's I, no way that you're going to always yell about this guy. Just I don't like him, but he's just racing a good a good bike right now. And he is racing a great bike. He's riding. He's riding tremendous, and no one can step up. Fortner knows it's the best. That's He knows it 100% the best, I promise you, because he knows he's really going to have to do something in six weeks and get himself together. His starts are there, but it's not good enough now because Dylan's starting in fifth and coming and winning. Yeah. Because he David Bullivan does nothing but preach to him. It says it's not all about the start. Because he doesn't want his rider to think if he doesn't get a good start, it's that the race, the race is over. It's all about the race. Yeah. It's all about that pace, the last two laps. Well, like your the last two laps better be your fastest. Yeah. The and incident, now you're talking. The right. incident we just talked about, Osborne Savachi. Osborne wrecked off the start. Right. So he was and dead last. came back from dead last. And, and came won, back. And won the race. Well, I don't... He didn't win the race. Oh, no, yeah. He, he passed got the championship. For... But, I mean, they that's, were up near the front. Yeah. I want to say they were, like, top five. I think he's, I thought he still podium, but I didn't know. I can't remember. He might have. But well, that just through. goes to show you, you don't... Yes, getting the whole shot is going to make your life a lot easier. The whole shot? Always. The whole shot. <laughs> mm, the whole shot. shot. On Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's going to make your day a lot easier. Oh, yeah. I'm with it. But... If you don't get a start, that's not the end of the race. The end of the race is when you see that checkered flag. Checkered flag. And you can put your head down and charge and, you got to. and yeah. do it. Something I want to, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a, a tick mark in this. Uh, something I want to touch base on Moto number five of the Moto Ohio show, flags. We, uh, we, we all are familiar with flags. And to me, the white flag is a courtesy flag. It's not always going to be there. The race is done when the checkered flag is there. Right. No, so, that's all the more po- that's all the more point that I want to put in that for right now. But I'm just putting a star and an asterisk next next to that. That is something that I want to talk about in detail. So we don't have a whole lot of races going on next weekend. No, There's I'm not going to be a whole lot to talk about. So let's let's get a topic to, yeah, t- to talk you're gonna about. Have, yeah, next week you have Supercross. You have the East Coast 250s. You can talk about and Route 62. Route 62. So there's not going to be a, a ton of racing action to, to recap. So let's let's put that on our topic list and talk about that next week. Oh, um, yeah, and, and, and what the specialness of how every flag plays its role. It will go over all of them, all, all the main I'm ones. With from, it. All of them from the main ones from motocross. Um, let's segue here into the 450 class. Um, impressive ride, impressive ride, impressive ride, Cooper Webb. There's there's nothing more you can say about that, that he he deserved that one. He, he put the work in and led that one. He was just a faster guy, man. He was the faster guy this weekend, finally putting the – putting the pieces together. What was this, round number five of the Supercross series? Something like six, that. Five. Four, five, five, six, something like that. And finally, you know, ending up where he did at the end of last season is great yep. to see. Um, especially with the with the caliber riders behind him, such as, you know, Eli Tomac and, you know, Adam Cianzarulo, and especially mm. um, Ken Roxon, who's had the past two weekends main events win. So, Keeping Ken Roxon outside the top five this past weekend. That's it. That's pretty, pretty track good. really broke down over there. It really, it really seemed like the whoops got one line through him and stuff, and a lot of following was going on. I mean, uh, not much. Cian Cirillo was jumping through him early in the main event, like Real early early. in the main yeah. event. Cian Cirillo was doing a jump line, so the, yeah. they were already broken down by the LCQs. The, the track, yeah, and in, in the LCQs, I think they started to jump through because I they? remember the, I remember the announcers pointing that out. I wish I could point that out. <laughs> um, well, it's just it's it, when you have like that many caliber big bikes ripping. Oh, it's good. just I'm stoked to see. Like, oh, Martin. I don't know why that dirt didn't stay. They're getting the heck out of here. You so, know that's why. Seeing Martin Davalos there in 13th, um, Rolling. or excuse me, 12th isn't isn't a bad result for him. No, not a bad result at all. One person I I 
I don't know exactly what happened to Jason Anderson. I remember I watched the whole 450 main event. So if something happened to Jason Anderson, I did see it, but I don't remember exactly what happened. So I'm a little bit disappointed, you know, off the cuff, seeing Jason Anderson into the number 14 I finishing position. I he just position. fell down or something. I mean, he just, just yeah, washed he's... in a corner or something. I'm, I'm not super, super thrilled Someone tell us. about that result. I got videos. I got, I got comments here. Yeah, but, uh, I got my comments up, too. Someone can say it. It's good to see the Eli or uh, Levi Kilbarger train rider, Justin Barsha, there inside the top five. That's great to see him, you know, keeping consistent results as he... Um, you know, was the main or the main event winner back at Anaheim one points leader up until last week or something or two weeks ago, and it's been right there inside the top you know five for points. So it's good yeah. to see him have some consistent results. Yeah. What's up, Jordan? Kilbarger's uh, Instagram story was Barsha and Plessinger practicing starts. And oh, I see. His that. caption was, "I think we're all going to be doing starts in our sleep or dreaming of starts or something like that." So they'll get them. Levi will get them ironed out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is for that is for sure. Um, it's good to see Eli um, inside the top five. Not quite the results I was hoping for him. Um, the Green Monster, they're just outside the podium. Uh, fourth place for Eli. You know, he fought his way up to that spot. Was was Blake Baggett riding that little ATV MC? No. Like, you know? El Chupacabra. El yeah. Chupacabra. Nobody talks about that anymore. That's the first I thing I say whenever I see him I on love, the TV is El Chupacabra. Yeah. But nobody nobody says that. So I'm, I'm stoked to see Baggett up inside the top three. I mean, I'm that's killer results for him. Look at this. We got the we're on racerxonline.com. We got the uh, his bike there in the background from this past weekend. Sweet looking pretty military. sweet looking yeah. bike. Military appreciation uh, race this past weekend. Um, Jacob just, Hayes is about hoop. Is that who's the, for, number forty five? That thing yeah. is sweet Ooh, looking. Yeah. It's a brown bike. The bomber. The bomber yeah. looking bike. We can see it here on on their on our screen. It, if I brought it up on the screen on on for camera, it would be too small for you guys to even yeah. recognize. So. Um, we're just kind of recapping the rest of the 450 class right now. Um, it's great to see um, AC in number two spot. AC in the number two spot. Read yeah, that thing for a while. Yeah, he's still learning. Yeah, he even said on the podium, he's still learning. He's he's excited to be able to learn this stuff so yeah. quickly off the start. I mean, of the like year. he said, to be able to be out there with the best, some of the best Supercross riders that's been around, man, that's awesome. I I don't think that Cooper Webb there. initially was a title contender. You know, thought of as a title contender last year. But seeing him towards the end of the season, he's like, I, th th this can happen. So he put the right. work in that no, that's it. he got the title. So I don't put it outside of Adam's reach that once he gets these results consistently, then Wouldn't he'll... That be Wouldn't that be something? Dude, I'm telling you what. He's right miss, there. Just miss out on it last year on a 250 and then just come back and just get the premier class gym. But that, you know what? I didn't need that one. I just I, get this one. This is the one that matters. This is the one that yeah. matters. This is the one that puts and I'm else. telling you what. If, he, if it doesn't happen this year... He's, he's very he's soon. He's one of my picks next year for sure. Very soon. And, you know, two and a half seconds, 2.75 seconds behind Cooper Webb coming across the stripe after 25 laps, 20 minutes plus one. That's a pretty long main event. We're getting, um, let's, let's get in some, some track breakdown just from these, just from these riders alone. So it's, it's good to see that consistency because we got three seconds between second and third, four seconds nearly between third and fourth. And it, it, the, the gaps are kind of similar from that point on moving forward. But, yeah, I can't say enough about Adam Cirillo's results from this past weekend. I, I hope See, that a he's... Lot, a, a lot of us don't understand what 25-lap races are. Gee, many frost. You know what 15 I'm laps for an arena cross race is insane. I can't I can't think about being the finish As line. As a rider line. going across the finish line yeah, and no clicking kidding. in your head saying, well, this is lap 16... Only nine more. What? <laughs> Only a whole motor left to go. You make tally marks on Dude. your bar pad. You're like, oh. I used to be able to click them off in my mind. You know what I mean? Because we would figure it out with the time. You know, because you would, you like, and well, just. That goes back to flags. We'll talk on that more next week. Yep. We'll, yeah, we'll that, was, that was awesome, yeah. The old green and white giving you the halfway, and you're like, dude, I want just that hey, white hey, one. don't be revealing stuff that I we're going to be talking excited. about next week. So <laughs> you got to think Save of it. 25 laps is a long main event. That is that's, 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 crazy long. And now we're getting back into Cooper Webb and Adam Cianciarulo's home turf. They're East Coast riders. Uh, Cianciarulo, he's from Florida. In this dirt. Yeah, and Cooper Webb, it shows he's from Newport, North Carolina. Right. It, so it shows that he's from the new from the yep. East Coast. That's where you This is where these guys are gonna be shining. So if the if I look forward to Tampa, it's gonna be a good time. If the points are gonna roll back to the number one and number nine's way, it's gonna be the next what is it six week six weeks? Yeah. It's gonna they have a six week break because they don't have a, t uh, a shootout. Oh, it's gonna they don't have an East Coast shootout, you know, and they get all in points for that when the East Coast and the West Coast come together before it's over. That's it. They have a yep. I think they got two shootouts this year. 
I, I, I love Eli Tomac. I, I he'll pick it up. He's what we'll be up there in Tampa because Tampa will get real rough and sandy and, and one point and outside out. of the lead right now. He'll be chopped up at, at Tampa yeah, and he'll be point. doing great. Ken Rocks is still leading the points with Eli Tomac in second, and I don't know off the top of my head who's in third. It's probably I don't either. I think it might be Barsha. It might be close. I'm not sure. It might be Cooper Webb. It might be. I, I could be coming through. I I don't know. Come on, Ashton Krause. You're 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 my saving grace right now. You're the guy. I mean, um, we do have a. Com- Computer. I know, but I'm doing so much. <laughs> I'm doing so much. I don't want to click a button I shouldn't click. <laughs> I want someone to tell me all my you got comments. The com- you got the comments up? Yeah, I got the I'll, comments up. I'll someone needs to just chime in. Do they you got guys, a computer too. Do you guys have anything else that you want to touch base on? We touched base on rounds uh, 7 8 of the Tri State Arena Cross Series. We touched base on Route 62's race coming up. Reba's trying to eat whatever is in your pocket, Jordan. I ain't got nothing in my pocket. That's, um, we've talked geez, about. Some jerky in there. <laughs> we've talked yeah. about Summit's upcoming race on the 21st and 22nd. So that's some upcoming races for the next two weeks. And that's about where we like to like to you know talk about the next two weeks in advance um i like to make a quick announcement that i will be making the trip down to georgia to lazy river mx for three of their races this year um they've got three killer events um i think they're all all three like you said like almost close to like a thousand plus riders each time they get like a thousand riders there yeah there's an area qualifier coming up in um let me uh just reach over to camera here coming up in april We'll be in Georgia at the, in the last weekend of the month, and in May, we'll be in Georgia in the middle of the month for a qualifier. So I'm stoked to go down there, meet a whole new crowd of people, talk on a new microphone, talk about a new racetrack, and just live. Probably new racers, watching good talent, and, new, yeah. new fast guys. But, whew, he's going to be talked about for a while. I am That's stoked it. to go down there. I can't thank... Uh, Thank, can't thank them for the opportunity for me to make my way down there. So there we go, Mr. Little Ashton comes through. Exactly. We got, we got K-Rock that. first, Tomac second, Web third, Bam Bam, then AC. We apologize yep. on the delay. Um, we It takes about you know a minute from what we say to be Get aired to on Facebook Live. Yeah. So oh, yeah. what was it? What was those uh, points again? We went, uh, Ken Rocks is still with the red plate. Yep. And then in your second place would be Tomac. One point out. Third place, Webb. That's fourth place Barsha, fifth okay. place AC. Yeah, Rox, that's awesome. Roxon has 130, Tomac 129, Cooper 121, 116, 113. So Adam just being it's fifth close. place is amazing. It, yeah, that's a good feat. It's not tightened up in a hurry. Your 250 class do. is Ferrandez with 135, Cooper with 128, Fork North 122, Hartran with 110, and Martin is in fifth with 98. Awesome. Moving. There we go. That's it. So that pretty much wraps up everything that I've got to say for Moto Number Four, the Moto Ohio Show. We, I can't thank Ronnie Farmer and the folks down there at the Tri State Arena Cross Series and the, and the whole crew for putting that whole show on. Um, eight round series, four cities this past year. Ronnie's got his eyes set on uh, returning to three out of those same four cities for eight rounds. So we're going to be racing eight races in three of the same cities. Sweet. And he has his eyes sight on. Two additional, two additional rounds. It'd be fun to see how the track changes. So from, up to twelve from races. Event to event in the same venue, you know how Donnie can make the track be different. You know because it yeah. won't be the same jumps and same. We were same just layout. drawn on the doodle. Fun. We were just drawn on the doodle pad here um, with a couple of different track layouts that maybe we'll talk about next week on the show. Maybe with we'll, some flags. Maybe, maybe we'll talk flags about, and track maps. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. It, hopefully that. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to sneak into Summit a day early and see if we can. Uh, get an eye on what's going on so touch base real quick just one more time just happy birthday ash hey hey february 13th I, that's that that just does me good that's you know? the worst birthday just, date i don't know we go out tonight i can <laughs> just the skip, best or the skip worst. all the waiting tomorrow you know what I mean? we just kind of consolidate on the one one dinner hey she loves it <laughs> love you babe there we go so that's i can't think you're going great yeah. i can't thank our listeners and our viewers for for joining us for motor number four the moto ohio show season number two of the moto ohio show let me uh navigate over to the proper uh, pain here, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get the closing music all kicked Real off. Real quick, and... maybe some people can comment on some topics they'd like talked about. Hey, I like that. Since we already determined the topic we're going to talk about next week, let's just uh, comment in. Yeah, some what other you guys. Things. We can throw a couple topics in there. It's not going to take too long to talk. You know, yeah, we, we can, can throw maybe in some topics that things. people would like to hear us or hear you guys, right. whoever's in here, talk about. So it just gives them a little bit more reason to listening other than we I mean, will um we cover everything we'll probably uh we'll probably have you back in the studio next week jordan just to uh talk some more supercross and hype some more summit 
and probably uh, the week after some, we'll get one of those riders that, that raced that. Hey, we got a bone somewhere in here, knocking something over. Um, the weekend or the week after some, we'll get one of those riders to come in here in the studio and, and talk about their summit racing experience and yeah. and see how they got into moto and just keep on spreading the word of motocross. That's right. That's right. So once again, I can't, thank, everyone. Thank, can't you. thank you guys enough for joining us for moto number four, the Moto Ohio Show season two of the Moto, show, moto Ohio Show here in the Everett 328 production studio. What's up, guys? It's Fast Derek here for the Moto Ohio Show. I am just compiling all the footage from last night's uh, Moto Number 4, and thanks again for joining us. Please hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Give our video a like and share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, share it everywhere. We're trying to spread the word of Ohio motocross. So once again, thanks for joining us for Moto Number 4, the Moto Ohio Show. Join us next week for Moto Number 5.